the Udana, section 5.6, Sona. Thus have I heard. At one time the Lord was staying near Savati in the Jeta wood at Anathapindika's monastery. At that time the Venerable Mahakachana was staying among the people of Avanti near Kuraraghara on Pavatta hill with the lay follower Sona Kotikanna as his supporter. Now while the lay follower Sona Kotikanna was in seclusion, this train of thought arose in his mind. According to how Master Mahakachana teaches Dhamma, it is not easy for one living at home to practice the holy life, holy fulfilled, wholly purified, and polished like a conch shell. Suppose I were to have my hair and beard shaved off, clothe myself in the yellow robes, and go forth from home to the homeless state. So the lay follower Sona Kotikanna went to the Venerable Mahakachana, prostrated himself, sat down to one side, and said, just now, revered sir, while in seclusion, I thought, according to how Master Mahakachana teaches Dhamma, it is not easy for one living at home to practice the holy life, wholly fulfilled, wholly purified, and polished like a conch shell. Suppose I were to have my hair and beard shaved off, clothe myself in the yellow robes, and go forth from home to the homeless state. Allow me, revered Master Mahakachana, to go forth. When this was said, the Venerable Mahakachana replied to the lay follower, Sona Kotikanna, Sona, it is hard to lead the holy life with its one meal a day and sleeping alone for the rest of one's life. Come now, Sona. Devote yourself to the teaching of the Buddhas while remaining a householder and try for a limited period to lead the holy life, eating one meal a day and sleeping alone. Then the lay follower Sona Kotikanna's idea of going forth subsided. On a second occasion, while the lay follower Sona Kotikanna was in seclusion, again the same thought arose. He went to the Venerable Mahakachana and asked to go forth, but again he received the same reply. On the third occasion, however, the Venerable Mahakachana allowed the lay follower Sona Kotikanna to go forth. At that time, there were few bhikkhus in the southern country of Avanti, so only after a lapse of three years did the Venerable Mahakachana with trouble and difficulty, managed to assemble together from here and there a group of ten bhikkhus to form an order of bhikkhus and give the higher ordination to the Venerable Sonna. Then, on emerging from seclusion after the rains retreat, the following thought occurred to the Venerable Sonna. I have not seen the Lord face to face. I have only heard that he is like this and like that. If my preceptor would give me permission, I would go to see the Lord, the Arahant, the fully enlightened one. So the Venerable Sonna, on emerging from seclusion in the evening, approached the Venerable Mahakachana, prostrated himself, sat down to one side and said, Just now, revered sir, while in seclusion, I thought, I have not seen the Lord. If my preceptor would give me permission, I would go see the Lord, the Arahant, the fully enlightened one. Good, good, Sona. Go, Sona, and see the Lord, the Arahant, the fully enlightened one. Sona, you should see that Lord who inspires trust and confidence, who has calmed senses and tranquil mind, who has attained perfect poise and calm, who is controlled, a perfected one, watchful with restrained senses. 
When you see him, pay homage in my name with your head at the Lord's feet, and ask whether he is free from sickness and ailment, and is healthy, strong, and living in comfort, saying, My preceptor, revered sir, Mahakachana, pays homage with his head at the Lord's feet, and asks whether he is free from sickness and living in comfort. Very well, revered sir, said the Venerable Sona, and pleased and appreciative of the words of the Venerable Mahakachana, he arose from his seat, prostrated himself before the Venerable Mahakachana, and left, keeping his right side towards him. Having set his lodging in order and taken his bowl and outer cloak, he departed on tour for Savati. Walking on tour by stages, he reached Savati, a Jeta wood at Anathapindika's monastery, and went to the Lord. Having approached the Lord, he prostrated himself, sat down to one side, and said to the Lord, My preceptor, revered sir, the Venerable Mahakachana, asks whether the Lord is living in comfort. Are you well, Bhikkhu? Are you in good health? Are you but little fatigued by the journey coming here, and been having no difficulty obtaining alms food? I am well, Lord. I am in good health, Lord. I am not fatigued by the journey coming here, revered sir, and have been having no difficulty obtaining alms food. Then the Lord said to the Venerable Ananda, Arrange a lodging, Ananda, for this newly arrived bhikkhu, then the Venerable Ananda thought, When the Lord orders me, saying, Arrange a lodging, Ananda, for this newly arrived bhikkhu, it is because he wishes to be alone with this bhikkhu. The Lord wishes to be alone with the Venerable Sona. So in the dwelling where the Lord was living, he arranged a lodging for the Venerable Sona. Then the Lord, having spent much of the night seated in the open air, washed his feet and entered the dwelling. And the Venerable Sona did likewise. Then, towards dawn, the Lord got up from his seat and requested the Venerable Sona, I would like you, Bhikkhu, to recite Dhamma. Very well, revered sir. The Venerable Sona replied to the Lord, and he chanted the whole of the sixteen sections of the Attakavagga, at the conclusion of the Venerable Sona's chanting, the Lord was highly pleased and said, Good, good, Bhikkhu, you have learnt the sixteen sections of the Attakavagga well, Bhikkhu. You have considered and remembered them well. You possess a fine voice, incisive and distinct. That makes the meaning clear. How many years seniority do you have, Bhikkhu? I have one year, Lord. Why, Bhikkhu, did you delay so long? For a long time, revered sir, I had seen the danger in sensual pleasures, but the household life, with its many activities and things to be done, held me back. Then, on realizing its significance, the Lord uttered on that occasion this inspired utterance. Having seen the danger in the world, Having known the state without clinging, a noble one does not delight in evil. In evil, a pure one finds no delight. <laughs>